We're back for another, I mean, it's not a glorious day, it's pissing with rain, but we're here to do some chemistry. I'm pretty sure in the last video I said that the next thing I'm gonna do was clean all the benches and uh, paint it, but if you've been watching the channel for a while now, you know that some of the things that I'm terrible at are cleaning and keeping promises, so. Um, <laughs> we're here to do some chemistry. No, I'm, I'm cleaning at the same time. Making promises that this place will be clean soon. Doing my best. This is an entry in a, a very long series that um, I haven't looked at in quite a while. I hate to think exactly how long it is because it's probably been quite a while and I don't want to think about that because time goes so fast. I'm old now. How am I old? Anyway, we're trying to make succinamide. Obviously, that's in the title. We have here succinic acid, which I got uh, from the internet, just from eBay. The idea of this series was really to use commonly available materials. Oh, I don't know, just stuff I can get at the household level. I had to make a few exceptions. I think the original idea for this was to go from MSG to succinic acid to succinamide, but that MSG to succinic acid step I wasn't quite sure about, and this popped up on eBay for pretty cheap. We'll make exceptions for this, so we're just starting with succinic acid here. So this is another one of these chemicals that I ordered ages ago and, and received ages ago, and it's just been sitting around waiting for me to open it to actually do the synthesis. So here we have equal portions of succinic acid. I've got 25 grams in here and 25 grams in here. We're gonna set this 25 grams aside for the moment. Now this one, what we're gonna do is neutralize this completely with ammonia. So first of all, we're gonna get it uh, a little bit dissolved. I don't know how soluble it is. The more water we add, the more water we gotta boil off later on. So we're trying to do it with the least amount of water possible, even though you know it's actually not really a detriment. Sort of dissolved a little bit. I'm um, giving it a tiny bit of gentle heat just to uh, help the dissolving along. Uh, we're gonna start with this ammonia. We know from previous videos that this has a small amount of uh, impurity in it. From when it was stored in a plastic bottle, it pulled some uh, terephthalate from the plastic, but it shouldn't matter too much. It's only a little bit and we are purifying our succinamide later on. And we just wanna add it until everything is neutral and uh, fully dissolved. The success of this synthesis really relies on me being able to tell when we hit neutralization, which with this pH paper is a bit of a bit of an arduous task. Five to six to seven really doesn't show up a whole lot different on the pH paper. It also looks different on camera than when I'm holding it. It looks green in real life, it looks red on the camera, but I'm fairly sure that that's neutral. What I might do is I might overshoot it a little and then just boil the solution and that'll drive off any excess ammonia so we're just going to overdo it slightly just add another splash yeah with that extra splash it's definitely green coming through terribly on the camera all right i only boiled it for a couple of minutes so i'm not sure it did anything at all but so now what we've done is we've fully neutralized all the succinic acids so the succinic acid has two acidic groups one at each end of the molecule and we've added enough ammonia now that's neutralized so each one of those groups is neutralized so we have you know by ammonia ammonium succinate, you know. Well, what we actually want for this reaction is we only want one of those groups to be neutralized because we want one of those groups, the ones that's neutralized, to actually attack the other end of the molecule and the molecule will cyclize. So we only want one end of the molecule to be neutralized. This is where our other 25 grams of succinic acid comes in. So when we add this, um, it'll all be half neutralized, exactly half neutralized. And it's not even a statistical thing. It means that sort of each molecule on its own will have one charged group and one unneutralized group, right? It's a bit of a weird thing, but it's a good way of sort of hacking our way into putting exactly half an equivalent of ammonia because we've neutralized one fully and then adding the second half rather than trying to hit a certain pH reading, you know, with our pH paper. We'll add in the rest of that now. So it doesn't all dissolve, it's mostly dissolved though, but what we're doing now is we're gonna crank the heat up and uh, and boil off all the water and then uh, crank the heat even further and we're gonna um, sublime off our material, hopefully. <laughs> we'll have to see, hopefully it works. Anyway, just uh, it's gonna take a while to boil off quite a bit of water, but um, what can we do? We can clean at the same time, that's what we can do. Looks like we've driven off all the water, but we've melted our ammonium succinate. So we we're, we're still have the heat quite high and we want to now do that ring closure, putting off quite a bit of ammonia fumes, which is, which is pretty unpleasant. I should be doing this outside, but it took many more hours than I thought it would. And now it's very dark. So we're not doing it outside. It's not overwhelming ammonia fumes. It's just um, my least favorite gas to deal with. What we don't want is we don't want to crank the heat too high at the moment because we don't want to sublime off our product and just have that leave the beaker. 
which I don't think we're doing currently, but uh, we, we want a, a, enough heat to, to do this ring closing reaction. All right, here we are next day. Uh, it's all solidified. Let's just crank the shit out of the heat. See if we can get it to sublime off. Well, first we want to just get it to melt 200 degrees or so maybe, and then push that extra 50 to 100 degrees before it starts to sublime. It's uh, fuming quite a bit now. It's quite irritating. I'm gonna to have to break out the gas mask, but uh, I reckon it is working. So I'm gonna crank the hot plate all the way to uh, its maximum. Then we're gonna use those two flasks, half filled with cold water, to sit on top of that beaker and collect uh, any uh, solid that will have sublimed off and condense it onto those flasks there. Okay, we're not uh, condensing anything yet. I think it's all just water vapor. It's coming off still, uh, not because there's residual water, but because we're forming water in that reaction. So I think I'm just going to have to let this go for a little while uh, and, and, you know, just deal with the fumes of ammonia, hot ammonia, really. Because nothing's condensing, it's all just water coming off still. So it's going yellow, of course, because uh, the organics are doing something incorrect. So it's going a little yellow, but, uh, hey, you know, every single bloody time. So what can we do? Right, it is working, but I've, I've lost my patience with it and I'm going to run out of light soon. Look at it, it's all black. Yes, yeah, so I've jumped over to the hot plate, as in the camping stove, sorry, uh, and then hopefully we can just pump heaps more heat into it and drive off the sublimation at a much faster rate and then collect a bit more because I haven't collected very much at all considering we have, you know, quite a few grams in there. So uh, I've taken the stir bar out and um, let's just crank the heat on and, and see what happens. Alright, looks like we're basically at the end of our uh, stuff at the bottom of our reaction mix. We really don't have that much product, so who knows where it's gone. I'm pretty sure I just heard the beaker cracking. We might have had some glassware down as well as some terrible yield, so uh, it's looking like a great day. I uh, don't know what else to say. Yeah, look, um... You know, it's a little brown, but otherwise it looks pretty good. And I reckon if we just did a recrisp now, it would clear up really nicely and we'd end up with a really nice looking final product. The problem is, there's only two and a half grams of it. What happened to all our bloody product? 50 grams of succinic acid went into that. There's two possible reasons. The first one is um, I just didn't collect a lot of the solid in the sublimation. I just screwed that up. It's possible, obviously I, I lost a lot of product that way, but to lose 90% of the product that way, really surprises me but i could be wrong because the other reason is maybe we kept the temperature at this sort of mid-range for too long we really wanted to boil it to dryness probably and so that's up to 100 degrees and then really move it up to like the the 280 300 degrees as fast as we could to sublime it off and i kept it at that sort of 150 range on the hot plate because the hot plate just couldn't get hot enough Maybe because I kept it that range, it was hot enough for it to decompose, but not hot enough for it to sublime off. Yeah, uh, charred stuff, but it is maybe just carbon. So if we, if we, you know, put off CO2 and ammonia and left behind the carbon, maybe that explains why we only got a tiny little bit of yield. I think the beak is okay. Look how clean the benches are, sorry. It's been three days, three work days, which I've been like, I will paint the benches and I still haven't got around to it. But anyway, we can't stop here. There's just not enough to continue on to the next step. So we have to try it again. I don't have heaps of ammonia. So what I'll do this time is I'll add pretty much all the ammonia and then add as much succinic acid as I need to neutralize it. And I'm gonna do it all again, but we, we're gonna change how we do the final collection method, I reckon. Um, we're gonna jump to a distillation. All right, I overshot it pretty much straight away. I put eight grams in and um, it went way acidic. So eight grams is not enough. It only gives us 16 grams in total once we double it and then taking consideration for yield, maybe we're only gonna get five grams from the distillation. That's not enough. We need we need a decent amount of this product to go to the next step. So look, this is hideous. It's hideous, but I've dug this out of the depth of the cupboard. Cloudy ammonia, 
bloody home brand. Let's try it out because we are going to be, you know, purifying our products. The annoying thing is it's quite dilute, so we're going to have to boil off quite a lot of water to then get the solution concentrated in our crystals at the end. So, okay, did I mention that the beaker was okay? Because it's definitely uh, not okay. That is uh, ruined. So, you know, rest in peace. Always sad when you have an unsuccessful experiment. I mean, it did work, just didn't work very well. Unsuccessful experiment, you also break glassware. That's when you really feel like a failure. At least I don't have to clean it then, I suppose. Just throw it out. <laughs> All right, that's gonna heat out there. <laughs> while I uh, actually get round to painting these benches. Ah, <sighs> finally. Actually, no, I take that all back. I'm not gonna paint. Look what I found, 30% ammonia. Um, danger. Ah, oh, I gotta stop putting things in multiple bottles. Ah, anyway, well, let's, yeah, look, if we're doing this experiment, we might as well uh, get a reasonable yield out of it. So let's use this and see how many more grams of succinic acid we can use. With that new ammonia, we managed to get 27.2 grams. I still have some ammonia left, but uh, 27.2 grams plus the other 27.2 grams, that puts us at 54 grams. So that's that's a whole lot better than, than the 8 grams. One downside is that we had to use the cloudy ammonia. We didn't have to, but we accidentally used cloudy ammonia, so now it looks a bit cloudy, but uh, fuck, it's just a bit of soap. It'll be fine. Now we have 300 mils of, of liquid to, to boil off, which is um, going to be annoying and going to take quite a bit of time. I'm going to put this... Uh, this hot plate in isolation over there and um, we'll, we'll paint the benches. I'll paint the benches. I'm gonna bloody paint the benches. I'm gonna get it done. Our mixture is now over 100 degrees, well over 100. It's uh, it's boiled off of the water now. It's just basically the molten mass or the last little bits of water. So I'm, I'm going to transfer it while I still can before it solidifies or anything into this flask here, which I've warmed slightly. Probably should have warmed a little bit more. But yeah, that'll help us distill it out of that flask. So I just need to pour it into there. Um, yeah, sure. I can do that. I'm not stressed at all. So I'm pretty unsure about this, but we're going to give it a shot. The mixture looks a little bit dreadful. That's because I put quite a bit of sand in there. That's to help it boil because now we don't have the magnetic stirrer in there. I don't want to cook the magnetic stir bar. The, the sand maybe, hopefully, will help it out a little bit. We want it to boil at, at 280 degrees or something like that and come over, but we don't want it to solidify. So we have to have it in this liquid range, which is like, what, 120 odd and, and above. We can't cool it down with the ordinary condenser because if we have a water-cooled condenser, it'll go below 100, it'll set and it'll clog and um, it'll all be terrible. So clogging is a huge concern. So instead, what I have here is my unconventional condenser, which is just a, uh, you know, a straight piece. And I'm hoping that this corner will be a concern, but I'm hoping that maybe across this, you know, it just has to drop from 250 degrees or so down to 200, and it'll keep quite a bit of heat on this tube because it's no sort of active cooling, but it should cool down a little bit because we're, you know, quite far away from the flames. So hopefully we can have stuff dripping down. It'll be pretty hot when it drips down, but um, then it'll cool down later. So this basically wanted time to do a short path condenser, but the problem with the short path condenser is that the, the things are, uh, the tubes are very, very um narrow. Actually, this problem might be a little bit of a problem. The tube, it gets very narrow there. So I might replace that with something else. Um, but apart from that, let's get this going on, on very dilute heat.
Okay, it's well and truly done. It's hard up quite significantly, but nothing else is, is coming over at this temperature. I'm gonna quickly disassemble it before it all cools down because I can see there's stuff in all the joints. And if that solidifies, it might crack the joint. The crystal is expanding and everything like that. So I'll uh, just quickly disassemble it while it's hot, but it's pretty hot. So <laughs> I'm not gonna film this. I'm just gonna focus on not getting burnt. All right, here's our collection. The first fraction I just mentioned is definitely just water. Uh, nothing came over here. It does look like the little bit of water made it into the second fraction, which is annoying, but it looks all right. I, I suppose you're expecting me to complain about the color, but it's orange and orange is okay. It's not yellow. Orange is fine. If we run a recrist from uh, ethanol or acetone, probably acetone, see, it uh, looks pretty good. It looks like there's actually a decent amount of product in there. I didn't manage to get all the joints apart before uh, it all set in the joints, so hopefully none of them are cracked. It looks fine. But seeing as the, the compound is pretty water soluble, I don't think we'll have a hard time with clean up. I'm a little bit worried about the tar, but you know, it's just pretty much uh, par for the course with all these organic reactions. It has to tar up somewhere. I won't complain too much, even though I've already complained a lot. We did lose quite a bit of product. Uh, this is a beaker that I was heating it to dryness in and, and it melted it in and tried to put it in the flask. So there is a bit of lost product in there, which is a shame, but oh well, you know I had to do it to them. So we've got our acetone here and our product, um, actually our two products, I'm just gonna combine them. So that's our two and a half grams from the first run. I'll just put that in with the other batch. Uh, we're gonna recrystallize it from acetone. The benches look all shiny and white, although is, I'm a little bit disappointed. It hasn't worked all that well. Like there are quite a few sort of air bubbles under the paint. And I don't quite know why that is because I know nothing about painting. Maybe the bench was wet or it's probably because I didn't sand it all back, right? Everyone's gonna say, should have sanded it all back. This has all come out terribly, especially this bit here. <laughs> it's also a water-based paint, which I think is why it wasn't really resistant and it was staining very easily. So I'm gonna try and do a top coat of this. Maybe if I do a top coat of like a real enamel, maybe A, it might look better and B, it might look better for longer. It might not strip up every time I spill, so. Yeah, hmm, paint chat. You asked for it. Here's our final product. It's beautiful. It's really crystalline, exactly what it should be. It's 17 and a half grams, which if we take off the two and a half grams, and we got 15 grams from that second batch after recrist, which you know isn't heaps. I mean, I probably lost quite a bit in the recrist. Probably use a little bit too much acetone, but it made us have a really nice final product. So 17 and a half grams, look, that's enough to go on to the next step with. So I'm happy. So how does this relate to the overall Apple project? Well, some of you may have worked that out already. If you're, you know, if you know your organic chemistry somewhat. Succinamide can be turned into chlorosuccinamide or bromosuccinamide. Also iodosuccinamide, but I don't think anyone really uses that. Those compounds are great at gently putting chloride or bromide onto an organic compound um, without overdoing it. Because I'm pretty sure the chlorine gas we've been pumping into our isobutene previously has been overchlorinating the substrate, which is why we have those issues. Chlorosuccinamide and bromosuccinamide are a classic laboratory reagents, but they're not something commonly available. So um, that's why we're going and uh, making them from the ground up. Sorry about my board being very messy. I sometimes don't have the heart to clear it all off after I've done all this art. So we've got to decide between chloral and bromosuccinamide because the moment we just have succinamide here. And so if you remember, this is our isobutene that we can make from the tertiary butanol. We're trying to either turn it into the methyl chloride or methyl bromide. And we've got to decide which one of these we want to make now because we're either going to make n chlorosuccinamide or n bromosuccinamide. Really, I think the biggest consideration here is the boiling points because we have to separate out the compound from the solvent. I think the classic solvent to use in this case is carbon tet, which I have. I don't particularly want to use. And we run into a bit of a problem here. If we use carbon tet, 
and um, N chlorosuccinamide. We have a boiling point of our final product is 72 degrees and the carbon tet boils at 77. So we're not really going to easily be able to separate our product. So we can make the bromo with a boiling point of a 94 and separate that out from our solvent. Or we could, you know, do the bromo and dichloromethane, the chloro and dichloromethane. That's what I'm leaning towards. So the DCM will, will boil out first and then we'll be left with a small amount of material which will distill over. The problem with that is that there was a combination we tried before and it didn't work. So um, <laughs> I'm a little bit unsure about it all. I suppose maybe using the more gentler chlorination, it will it will work fine. And I think making the N-chlorosuccinamide will be easier than making the N-bromosuccinamide, even if it's just from the point of view that I don't have to make more bromine chloro. I think we're just going to use hypochlorite for... I obviously bring it up because in the comments there are generally people who are very good at organic chemistry and I'm average at best. You guys always have very excellent suggestions and are very helpful. So it's a team effort and, and we're trying. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. We, we did quite a bit in this video. Having to do it twice took, took up a bit of time, but I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'm really glad we've made another entry into this very long running project. I feel like we're just a little smidgen closer to our end goal. 